Last time, our surveyors joined us on board. This is at the low end of voice. We got the sails up for a leisurely sea trial. And we hold out to begin our time in the boatyard. It's, it's in. officially arrived. We have our survey. This document is, it's a beast. It is. There's so many pages to this. So this is like when you buy a house, you get someone to come and they inspect everything on the boat and they write it up in this massive document and then we get to know all the maintenance everything. we have to do forevermore. <laughs> yeah, this is essentially our jobs list for the next five years. Uh, we just need to go through and work out the priorities, the things we didn't know about before, because those are the things that we're going to talk to the person who's selling the boat and we're going to say, look, we didn't know there was a problem with the engines and therefore maybe we have to get that addressed before we buy. Yeah, fun job today is just reading through this and then highlighting everything that needs to be done and then prioritizing it for cost and ease and importance and safety and then taking that to the seller and seeing where we go from there so this is kind of the moment of truth from everything yeah like this decides if this is the boat for us moisture in the holes yeah the steering got the bearing to be replaced Here's all the safety stuff. Uh, I don't like having flares on board. Yes, yeah, so it will need to move the life raft. There's a couple of major things. This is the scary one. Yeah, so that's like that's the, gonna be a the biggest major thing that would make us not want to buy this boat. Okay, so that's not horrendous. It's not too scary. No, all these requirements are written in red, which makes them scary. But when you actually look at what they are, most of them are like replacing a hose clip. Yeah, a lot of them are small things that we can do. Yeah, the, the good thing is with this, all these requirements and recommendations and things, they have actually written up a separate document. Yeah, it says we need to do these before we actually go anywhere else. Um, and there are... 25 safety things. Although, how many of them are scary? Like tying the anchor chain on with the bitter end of a rope. Yeah, okay. Buying paper charts. But then there's bigger scary ones like bilge alarms to be reinstated. And then there's also another list of 16 things that require our immediate attention, but they're not necessarily safety items. So I guess what we do is we take that back to the seller. Well, yeah, because we haven't really explained this properly. We knew we wouldn't be able to afford this boat for the, the sticker price, the list price yeah. on the website. So when we spoke to the seller, effectively we worked out that if there were no brokers involved, instantly he's saving 10%. Um, and that meant that we could offer him 10% less than he was hoping to get. This document shows up some things we didn't know about. Yeah, which just means that we can now negotiate further. So we can either say, well, we're still happy to buy the boat at the number that we all agreed on if you rectify all these things in this list, or we're still happy to buy it, but take off this amount of money because we will need to go and fix all these things. So we just need to kind of decide how many of these things we're going to take on board ourselves mm -hmm. because... It's up to us if we want to fix all the latches on some cupboards, but lifting the engines to replace two sump pans, which are like underneath the engine, that's quite an expensive fix that wasn't in the listing, as you wouldn't be surprised. They always say, be prepared to walk away from the boat. I think we would love to get this, but yeah. only if it's right and if it works out. This is kind of crunch point now. If it all fell apart at this point, like we actually don't have another plan. Well, we'd be homeless in a random country on an island that's barely connected to anywhere else with yeah. an airport. So it feels like we're overcommitted. <laughs> okay, I guess we should uh, write some formal email to the seller yeah. and see what we can do. Okay. We think everything will go through fine, but while we're waiting, I think we're going to make a start on all the little tasks and uh, see where we end up. I mean, don't know why you're laughing. You're caked up in the same kit as I am. Ta-da! Today's job is... Sanding the hull, so we need to try and take off the old anti-foul paint, sand it down as much as possible, and then we can tape up and start painting on the new stuff. So it's going to be a messy job, it's going to be a hot job, but we've got all the PP we need to look good while we're doing it. Oh yeah! So here we go, the 
let's see how it goes. We managed to get uh, most of the inside of one of the hulls. So we're a quarter of the way there, I guess. My job today is to try and sort out these keel bolts. The idea is that the, the keels are just bolted on with these 10 bolts all the way down. And if you hit anything or there's any damage to them, they can just be completely replaced and the hull should be absolutely fine with no damage. We've actually met some people in this boatyard who did exactly that and there was no problems with the hulls at all. So a lot of seawater can get in around these bolts. There's lots of little um, kind of pockets of air and water when you push them, the water bubbles out. So I'm just gonna go through and try and dig out all the sealant that looking a little bit bubbly or a little bit dodgy. Let them dry out a little bit and then we'll just uh, put some sealant back in and try and smooth it over so that when we paint over the top, it gets as smooth a finish as possible. So that is my job for today. So the inside of one keel is now done. by building yard and uh, I've commandeered a pallet. So I'm gonna take this back to the boat and uh, we'll use it to lay our anchor chain out on. Good. It turns out we only have 40 meters of chain, not 50. So that's interesting. <laughs> so we're marked up, we have a small marking for five meters, then a big marking for 10, two for 20, three for 30, and then all the way up here. And then I can just paint that one big solid block and then you know when you hit the white, you've yeah, made it. It'll be definitely helpful to actually know how much chain we're putting out. You're right, yeah. We're back on the generator again. Yesterday we thought we'd worked it out that it was maybe the raw water temperature sensor. So we disconnected the sensor and the generator kind of seemed to run properly, but it wasn't sucking up water from a bucket that we'd put together, so that was a bit confusing. And uh, so what we've done is we've taken the impeller out, which is like a little, well, this is a, a working impeller, so um, it's like a little rubber cog with all these little blades that turn. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you squeeze this into a fitment and then it, as it spins, it pulls in seawater and spits it into the engine. So it's kind of like a, an Archimedes screw. Um, that's a good impeller. This is the impeller we just took out of the generator. <laughs> so it should have 12 teeth in total. And if you're generous, it's got five. <laughs> More likely three. So all these little rubber flangey teeth things have been ripped off inside the engine. Wow. And what's worrying is we need to find them all inside the engine and count them. They might still be stuck in the engine and if you leave them there, they build up and they collect rubbish and then the whole engine seizes over time and that sort of thing, yeah. so, or overheats in the end. Once we fit it, we'll get some more water, we'll cover it in soapy liquid and uh, then hopefully we'll see some bubbles come out of the engine <laughs> and that tells it's all good. So I just had to take apart the heat exchanger to try and find all these teeth. And so, did you find them? Well, I'm just trying to work out how many of them. So one, two, three, four, I'd say five. So I'm missing one. Oh, I reckon. not bad though. And it may have just got flushed all the way through. If we're unlucky, it's at the other end of the heat exchanger, but it's really hard to get to. We just need to pick up some water, which we have a hose for, and then we might be able to run the generator and test AC. I mean, we've been doing that for two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> we have, but this actually feels close now. So it took New starter motor, a new relay, a yeah. new fuel injector pump, it's our primer pump, water temperature sensor. We bled it of air because it was there in the fuel lines. And then in the end, we also replaced the impeller and cleaned out the heat exchanger. That's pretty cool, we're working. Oh, well, we've just got our laundry picked up. We still don't have a washing machine or anything on board. So when we were on the water, I could wash things by hand, but I, uh, <laughs> We chose to live in the life of luxury this week while we're on the hide. Spend all our budget. <laughs> yeah. I paid for somebody else to wash our things. And I sweet talked you into carrying it all. <laughs> I thought I was just coming for a stroll. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice stroll in the heat of the day. Let's break from all the stuff we're having to eat. Yeah, our routine seems to be that we try and get up in the morning and work 
and then we need to take like two hours off at lunchtime because it's just too hot by then. And then we have to try and gear up again before mosquitoes come out at dusk. You look ridiculous. Hey, I look great. <laughs> what is it you're about to do? I'm just gonna go and um, put some little pulleys at the top of these lines here so that they don't chafe on the metal bar that's up there. So I'm definitely gonna drop this pin and one of them is bent. So you've given me some flyers so that I'll have to try and do it up there without losing the tiny crucial part. And it's only a little bit windy. Yeah, lightning storm earlier today. Super comfy. <laughs> I'm ready. Some jobs are just easier to do when you're on the hard, and going up the mast is one of them. Aside from the lack of swell that usually bashes you against the rigging, if you're lucky, you get a moment to take in a great view from a whole new perspective. Beautiful knot. We've just had the first round of negotiations done and to be honest, I think we both hoped that it would have gone better. <laughs> of points on the survey that we had to discuss yeah we found it quite difficult um, and, and not enjoyable at all at one point we kind of looked at each other and thought oh my goodness is this whole thing just about to fall through and so yeah we're just left a little bit shaken now we were kind of hoping that by by tomorrow we might be able to say we're boat owners and instead I think by tomorrow we might be completely homeless without a plan and no idea of what's happening next. So, we have sent another email to the seller. We had started going through every point on the survey line by line to discuss it all, and that didn't really seem to get us anywhere. So we have gone back and said, why don't we just take everything and divide it in half and meet in the middle? we're just really hoping that he comes back and says yes to that. We're just kind of sitting now with our fingers crossed, waiting for a phone call. There's nothing else we can do. We just have to wait for him to think about it and come back to us. And I, I can't guess either way which way it'll fall. I can't imagine getting tomorrow and, and, and saying that this boat is now ours. And I also can't imagine getting to tomorrow and thinking, oh my goodness, we need to move all of our stuff off here and find somewhere to live for now. Um, and then make a plan for our lives. <laughs> Seems, seems just absolutely crazy and ridiculous, but it looks like those are our two outcomes. So it's an odd sort of day. We're just sitting around waiting for this phone call and waiting to see what happens. We have been going back and forth in the negotiation phase, trying to nail down you know, the, the value of all this repair work that we didn't know was coming. Yeah. Um, we, we had to research that, then we went back and forth with the owner to try and organize, or the seller, I should say, to try and organize a price point that made sense to everybody. And as of last night, we're not going to buy this boat.
Okay, okay, hold up and dry those tears. It might sound like our story ends here, but that is definitely not the case. It was just as much of a shock to us as it is to you, and we really didn't know where to turn next. It's been a wild ride, and we want to be able to tell you the whole story. So we're going to take a few weeks off to get everything finished, and you can join us as our journey continues in season two. We wanted to say a massive thank you to all of our patrons for keeping this season under wraps. Your support has been amazing, and we'll keep the postcards coming. So stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Can't wait that long to find out more? Head to our website and follow us on social media at Real Red Seas. If there was ever a time to hit subscribe, this is it. And don't forget to ring that bell so you know the moment we release an episode. If you've enjoyed this video, consider supporting us on Patreon.